So what do commercial pilots actually do during a flight? Some say it's a bit of this, and a bit of this, but mainly a lot of this. Just kidding, they're obviously way too busy taking selfies for their pilot gram. But jokes aside, almost every single airliner today has incredibly complex computers that are capable of essentially flying the plane, from the moment the wheels leave the ground to even landing the plane automatically without any human intervention. Now, contrary to popular belief, autopilot is used to help the pilot and reduce their workload during flights and not fly the aircraft the entire time from start to finish so that the pilot can watch Top Gun for the 80th time. Now, as you can imagine, there is a little bit of a backstory to how planes went from wooden boards attached by steel cables to the electrification of aircraft controls by a revolutionary system called fly-by-wire to almost complete automation today. In fact, airliners back in the 50s required a crew of five with a navigator, a flight engineer, a radio operator, and two pilots. Today, three of those roles are fulfilled by computers and no longer needed. So in this video, I'm going to explain how does autopilot actually work, and what tasks can and can't autopilot do today anyway. And lastly, I'll uncover what may be next to come for autopilots of the future. Spoiler alert, it's AI. AI will fly all the planes, AI will own all the land, and conquer all the people. AI Let's talk about autopilots. Basically, as soon as planes were invented, engineers got cracking on an autopilot system. Because why do any work yourself when machines can do it for you, right? In 1912, the first autopilot system was invented by the Sperry Corporation. It was a gyroscopic heading indicator and attitude indicator that were connected to hydraulically controlled elevators and rudder and the system was able to keep the plane at a constant heading and flying straight without any pilot input. This system quickly evolved, and just after World War II, a C-53 transport aircraft completed a transatlantic flight using only autopilot, including taking off and landing on its own. Perhaps it was during this time when the pilots started referring to their computer counterparts as George, as in let's let George fly for a while. Now it's rumored to have originated from World War II pilots referring to King George, who technically owned the aircraft they were flying. And after the war, autopilot systems continued to be developed, both for military and commercial planes, especially after studies in the 70s showed that most plane accidents were caused by pilot error. But it wasn't an overnight or even an over-decade development. There were very important building blocks before true automated flying could be achieved. So let's talk about those for a second. Now the first step to autopilot was a system called fly-by-wire. This is a computer system through which pilots physically fly the plane 99% of the time. Now traditionally, flight control surfaces used to move the aircraft had mechanical controls. These require pulleys, levers, cables, and hydraulics to actuate movement. But it was incredibly taxing for the pilot to wrestle against these very heavy components and the aerodynamic forces acting upon them. Eventually, Airbus started to develop a fly-by-wire system, a computer system that can interpret the pilot input on the yoke, translate it into a desired pitch, yaw, and roll, and in turn move the various control surfaces to reach the desired outcome. Now the pilot may not even be fully aware of the flight control surfaces that are actually changing, only that the aircraft is flying as expected. And this fly-by-wire system not only lightened the physical load on the pilots, but on the aircraft itself as well, since with computer systems, the aircraft no longer required multiple redundant mechanical flight control systems, which added significantly to the weight of the aircraft. Now, of course, this new but crucial computer system required multiple levels of redundancy as well, because even though we know computers are perfect, the humans writing their code are not. 
Hence, multiple computers and actuators are used on board. And in the case of electrical failure, some aircraft retain very basic hydromechanical backup systems for the very essential flight controls. In fact, this became a point of differentiation for Airbus and Boeing aircraft, since Airbus allows its autopilot systems to have ultimate control and does not allow pilots to push the plane past its performance limitations. And also, it has no mechanical backup backups for control surfaces like the rudder or the trim. On the other hand, fly-by-wire systems on Boeing airliners allow the pilot to override all computer controls and push the aircraft past its performance limitations. Well, it's supposed to. Fly-by-wire essentially served as a building block for more advanced automation we have today. After we added a few sensor readings to the mix and well, a lot of math. But first, let's take a step back and look at what an autopilot system architecture might look like today. At the center is a computer, obviously, called the flight director. This is the brain of the system that performs advanced calculations and controls the rest of the system. The FD is connected to various sensors, namely position sensors or accelerometers and rotation sensors, also known as gyroscopes. Now these tell the autopilot and the pilots the plane's altitude, heading, airspeed, bank angle, and a lot more information. And data from radio and navigation systems are also fed into this flight director, in addition to commands from what is called the flight controller. This is where the pilot can tell George what he needs to do. And route data prepared ahead of the flights is also inputted into the system before takeoff. And throughout the flight, pilots make adjustments via the flight controller or can turn autopilot off completely. So based on all the information that's being fed into the central computer, it calculates the difference between where the plane should be and where it is currently, and sends a signal to the flight control surfaces like the rudder, the elevator, the ailerons, etc. Now this is done via servo mechanism or servos attached to each control surface, the same ones used by the fly-by-wire system even with autopilot turned off. Now, an autopilot is sometimes accompanied by a twin system for sensors and actuators in the engine. Now, this is controlled by a system called the auto throttle, which is also the name of an underground rock band from the 80s, probably. Now, as you can imagine, this is a very precise system, but in reality, the sensors that autopilot relies on accumulate error over time. For example, since the position of the aircraft is calculated using its last recorded position, small errors incurred at each position measurement will compound into large errors that worsen with flight time. And this error accumulation is also known as integration drift, and even the best accelerometers on the market will accumulate an error of around 50 meters every 17 minutes or so. So to get rid of this error, typically two or more sensors will be referenced at once and the various streams of information will be combined using what is called a Kalman filter. Now the magic of this algorithm is that it can not only merge sometimes conflicting data coming from each sensor, but also provide a more accurate reading than any one sensor alone. Now there are two steps in the algorithm. First is the prediction step. Based on data already collected, it will make an estimate for each variable along with how confident the algorithm is in each prediction. Then, as the actual data, probably containing some error, is received, these estimates are updated using a weighted average, with more weight given to variables with higher confidence. And this process essentially repeats again and again each time a new reading is provided, with the inputs from various sensors essentially training the computer to provide the most accurate reading of them all. Now, of course, this is a very oversimplified explanation to one of the many error reduction algorithms out there, and another maybe more straightforward method that is used alongside these fancy algorithms is a simple voting system, where three or more channels process input data simultaneously, and if one disagrees with the other two, the channels in the majority would just outvote the disagreeing data.
data. In this system of multiple computers doing the same task exists anyway, since flight controls are absolutely essential for the aircraft to, well, stay in the air, multiple systems are required for redundancy in case one ever fails. So for this reason, software processes will not only run on separate computers, but many times be built by different teams and written in different programming languages, since the chances of two different teams making the exact same mistake are minimal. Take for example the space shuttle, which had five flight computers, four of which ran the same main software. The fifth contained a separately developed software for very basic flight controls. Today, autopilots can perform essentially everything except taxiing and takeoff. They can navigate, sustain flights, and even land on their own in what is called a Cat 3C or 00 landing, needing no intervention from the pilot. Now, while this sounds pretty great, it's actually not used too frequently in practice, as less than 1% of all landings are performed by the autopilots, unless visibility is extremely poor, or I guess if the pilots are in a rush. Now, this is because auto land systems have very strict requirements for both the pilots monitoring the system and for antenna and radio systems on the ground. Hence, only certain major airports will even allow planes to auto land. Now, the entire process also requires the pilot to be paying very close attention in case anything goes wrong. They need to anticipate and confirm every move of the autopilot during this very critical phase, to the point where most pilots simply find it easier to land the plane themselves. However, in very bad visibility conditions, auto land is sometimes used as a last resort. And the same principle applies for why the autopilot doesn't taxi or take off either. The existing technology, even from autonomous vehicles, is enough to taxi the aircraft and take off, but it is simply much easier for the pilot to perform these tasks manually than try to write a complex algorithm to deal with all of these different factors. Now, very clear downside of the current autopilot systems is the lack of flexibility. Sure, in the 99% of normal flight scenarios it's actually designed for, the autopilot does a great job. But once an unpredictable variable gets thrown in, or something even as small as a faulty sensor, it can trigger the autopilot to fail, like in the case of the Boeing 737 MAX. And that's where AI can come in and give us a helping hand on the yoke. That was a stretch. And several researchers have proposed training artificial neural networks, or ANNs, using pilot inputs on flight simulators and learning from how they react to emergency situations. And for the emergency scenarios tested, the AI consistently matched or outperformed human pilots. And another approach is being taken by a team at Stanford led by Professor Michael Kokendifer, where a dynamic programming approach is taken instead. This is where all of the possibilities at each moment of flight is calculated ahead of time, and the best course of action is decided for each potential scenario. Now, the AI will need to predict what will occur next with the highest probability and react accordingly. Now, every calculation is completed before the plane even gets off the ground. Now, of course, this would involve billions of permutations to calculate, so approximations are used instead by a process called discretization, where continuous inputs are sampled to create discrete data points instead. Now this reduces the scope of the calculation to just a couple hundred million. Easy peasy. And NASA is also developing a system called Learn to Fly, which operates using the same principle as baby birds learning how to fly for the first time. They get shoved out of their nest and it's fly or die. Now, it's actually not as morbid as it sounds, but essentially this program will control the aircraft knowing nothing about its systems or aerodynamics. It will simply make guesses as to what to do, and based on how the aircraft reacts, it will literally learn on the fly, and that's hopefully before the plane reaches the ground. 
Now the benefit of this approach according to NASA is that the aircraft can simultaneously learn the impact of its controls on every movement axis of the aircraft, whereas the current approach of remodeling every single aerodynamic factor using a wind tunnel could take years to accomplish. So once the algorithm is installed on an aircraft, it will begin to learn from its behavior by running in the background. And in the case of an emergency, hopefully use that knowledge and very powerful brain to bring the aircraft to safety. So guys, that was a simplified, well, relatively <laughs> explanation of how autopilot systems work and the progression of how technology on aircraft has evolved from fly-by-wire systems to almost full flight automation and beyond. And for the pilots here who've used an autopilot system to fly, let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your perspective. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel for new aviation content like this. This. I'd also like to extend a warm welcome to all of the new members of our Patreon community. We've grown so much the past week, so I wanted to give a huge thank you to 12 Tone, Azim, Benjamin, Don, Eric, Jacob, Jorge, Jose, Kim, and Victor. Thank you for supporting my channel. All right, guys, that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Which added significant, which added, which added significant, significantly to Professor Michael Kokenderfer, Kokenderfer.